Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode, write down my grandparents' address? Will do. Salesperson keeps convincing me that I need carefree plan for my new furniture. Grounded. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Write down my grandparents' address? Will do. So my school does a lot of fundraising, which is annoying considering what they're paid in tuition. As one of their fundraisers, they had us drag our grandparents into it. For a grade, we had to write a letter to our grandparents telling them how much we loved school and how great it would be if they could donate. Ook. Way overstretching the boundaries here. First off, three out of four of my grandparents were dead at the time and the other was completely insane with no idea how to handle money. Not gonna send a letter to her. However, it was mandatory to do this. I'm sure I could have wrote that I had no viable grandparents to write to, but I was pissed. So I looked up the cemetery where my favorite grandmother is buried and wrote that address down. I also included a note that said love you. Hope you're doing well over there. Vague but true. Turned it in, got a 100. I don't think they ever found out. My only regret is that now that poor cemetery gets a newsletter from my school every month. Salesperson keeps convincing me that I need carefree plan for my new furniture. We recently bought a new home and it's a lot bigger than the old one. A trip to the furniture shop to pick out some replacements. The salesperson was completing the cart and right before we closed the ticket. He kept trying to convince us to buy the extra care plan. He gave all a runaround scenario like, do you have pets, kids, guests that will visit, etc. One of the things I came in for were bar stools. I got four of them, and I asked if I can just buy a care plan for one bar stool, and he said yes. Okay, for $14.99 I bought the care plan that will cover for five years and I'll claim the warranty if any chair breaks. It has no barcode, so they won't know which is which. I think the guy realized when he gave me the receipt. Cause he smiled and said that's sneaky. Oops, too late. Grounded. Worked as an inspection specialist for a large flying machine factory in the Seattle area. Bosses decided that they didn't want us to be on site on the weekend just in case we were needed. It was easy overtime for the most part because normally it was some routine easy stuff for 16 hours of overtime pay. After they announced their new policy, the team got together and agreed that if any of us got called in on a weekend, we would refuse to come in. The first Saturday after the new policy was installed, we had all planned on getting together to have some beers and barbecue. Side note, this was prior to personal cell phones. The phone rings at our host's house and it's our supervisor. She asks if the host can come in to do an inspection on one of the large flying machines due to be delivered the following week. When we make a delivery, the company gets paid for the flying machine, he tells her no, he is far too intoxicated to perform that kind of work, let alone drive in. She asks if she knows where one of our colleagues might be, and he tells her he's right here. Colleague tells her the same thing, and the process repeats until she has gotten to everyone who worked in our lab. Then we all got called at home on that Sunday as well with the same results. Not a lot they can do since we're not on the clock. Now these flying machines will have a crew of several mechanics and QA people assigned to this particular machine. They literally have nothing to do without the results of our testing. The mechanics in QA were paid more than us, and they were drawing overtime just sitting there. Not to mention a multi-million dollar flying machine sitting there unable to be delivered to the buyer until the work is completed. Monday rolls around and first thing in the morning one of us goes out and knocks the job off in about a half hour and everything's right in the world. Tuesday morning, our management is asking us to put together an overtime schedule effective the following weekend. Apparently someone higher up told them that burning a dollar to save a penny wasn't working. Their no more weekend overtime policy lasted literally one weekend. 
If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.